Somehow I made it onto James Dean's four rotor FDR7, but I'm gonna talk with him a little bit about this latest iteration of this build. <sighs> Mr. Popular over here. I basically I basically had to pry you away from your fans. <laughs> I was telling your family that I, you might need a security guard. <laughs> I love coming back to Ireland. Like I'm traveling so much and when I come home and just to spend some time and even seeing so many familiar faces that have been coming and meeting us when we were just starting out and they're still coming here 15 years later, it's, it's amazing. So Mondello Park for me is really special. Yeah, so this is pretty much where your career started. Yeah, yeah. So I actually had a chance to photograph this exact car many years ago. Very different version. <laughs> back in 20... 2012. 2012, yeah. so September 11 2012. Years, 11 years ago, yeah. uh, Dayo Shihara came, yeah. you know, obviously D-Mac had his um, 86 build, yeah. you know, you had this with an SR20. SR20, yeah, 2.2 liter SR. Um, we built this car originally back in 2009 after the Red Bull World Drift Championships, which I had my very first S14. Um, I crashed that car at, in Long Beach at the, in the docks for that crazy Red Bull event. And uh, for the 20, 2009 Irish Drift Championship, we needed a car and we had this car, my brother had this car in the yard, had a blown two rotor and uh, we took that out. We didn't know anything about rotary, so took that out. We had a, uh, we just met an SR fit into this car and I used it with an SR until, last time I drove this car was two years ago. So uh, the dream always was to have a rotary, um, but you know, it, it was never possible. Firstly, with knowledge. Secondly, just when I was, my, my driving and career was progressing, a like S chassis with a 2J just made way more competitive sense than trying to develop the SR even further and having, uh, you know, reliability issues. So uh, we kept this car as a demo car with the dream of eventually putting a crazy rotary into that. And uh, it's finally come this weekend. Yeah, so <laughs> it's so interesting. Like, came here, shot you, some stuff happened, mainly you winning three championships. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And then uh, now we're here. So you're back in FD, which is super cool to see. Yeah. Um, but this is. Is this just going to be your demo car? Yeah, this is just built for fun, for just even my own, my own pleasure. Like I think if I was at home or you know after a, a tough week or something, I would just go into the workshop, start this up, and just start smiling because yeah. this thing is, it's a crazy, crazy setup, and it's just been a dream. Like yeah, it goes way back to my days before I was even competing, playing Gran Turismo. Like I loved watching racing when I was growing up and. The 787B noise. I don't know how many YouTube videos I'm after watching over you know the past 20 years, just listening to those cars fire up and just idling. And I always dreamed of doing it. Of course, Mad Mike with his car. That's always been insane for me to watch and uh, listen to. And uh, yeah, we finally, finally 
uh, been able to make it happen. Yeah. So this thing, I had a chance to watch you during practice, mm -hmm. and oh my goodness, it just sounds so <laughs> good. We finished it like pretty much this morning. It came from the dyno yesterday. Everything has changed in the car, like even steering rack positions, suspension things, lots of changes. So we came here, the car, like, <laughs> came here with no body kit, nothing. We had to finish all of that overnight and this morning. Um, so yesterday evening before practice finished, we managed to just take it out there as a chassis with almost no brakes, no handbrake, just to get a feel for it and make sure it was running okay. And then overnight we put on all the body kit and today has been the first time we've seen it completed. It looks sick, I love it. I personally love it. I love, I love, of course, the, the classic Falcon Scout yeah. livery. We just changed so it up. Cool. We cha if you look at it from a distance, it's like a triangle, a bit of a inspiration from the 787B and yeah. the same with the wheels. It looks So the turbo cool. fans in the front and gold, big dishes on the back. Yeah, I, and these are actually your wheels? Yeah, so uh, Strom, this Irish uh, company, they've, they've, um, we've been working with them and they wanted to make a custom wheel when they heard our idea and they made it happen really quickly for us for this event. So with inspiration from the 787B. So. Did they actually help so, you make this too? So they, they made the original wheel in, on the inside and then uh, my local shop, Lexi Brake, they've managed to make these. Uh, we ha we told, went to them, told them the idea left it with him for a few days and uh, he came back with this. The turbo fans are just so cool. Yeah, they I are. love that there's still the design of the wheel. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. yeah. It so it's cool and, so, and it's so uh, it's really simple too. They're just, we drilled the wheel and this is like a spacer on the inside. So it's actually a three piece fan. This is a spacer, then it's welded to the actual disc and then all these fins are welded on the inside too. There's and no even steering vibration, nothing. Everything feels great. It's survived this long already. Yeah, 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 so far. <laughs> so that far. is so cool. Um, all right, let's check out the engine bay. Yep. So here we have it. 26B four rotor. Um, yeah, it's, can't, I can't believe it, to be honest. It's How many uh, four rotors are in Ireland? Is this all Zero. Ireland? This is it? Yeah, this is it. As far as I know, there's none in, there might be in the UK, I'm not sure. But as far, this is definitely the only four rotor drift car in Europe, for sure. So then, are rotaries pretty big in Ireland? Not really, not really. So people don't have much knowledge with them. That's, so that's why I was dealing with uh, PPRE in New Zealand. So they built the engine and uh, shipped it to me and gave me all the advice on what parts to run and, and uh, you know, what to do and things like that. But, so far, it's been super, um, super reliable. No issues. Came straight after dyno. We're revving it to 10,000 RPM. It sounds crazy. It's loud as hell. It shoots fire. Yeah, it's it's like a flamethrower. It <laughs> shoots so much fire. Yeah, man, it's crazy. So then, uh, on the dyno, how much did it make? Uh, 550 horsepower. So all in a 550. So like, it's not like competition spec drift cars these days, but this runs on street tires. So it's perfect. We still have some things to refine, like uh, handbrake is not really working that well. We'll change the gear ratio to have really short splits between all the gears. But today is like a test day in front of 10,000 fans watching. So it's, it's cool. It's literally the first time you're running. This. First time, yeah. yeah. So then what transmission? So it's a Samsona sequential five-speed transmission. Same as what I run in all my pro drift cars in Europe. Yeah, wise fab on the front. Uh, BC racing coilovers. So, because the rest of the car was built already. The rest of the car was built already. What made it tricky is we had to move the steering rack lower oh. to fit the engine nice and low. Now we could have put it in at, you'll see a lot of uh, four rotors sit at more of an angle, but yeah. we wanted it as level as possible and as low as possible. Why is that? Just for center of gravity and just the look of it sitting, like without the intake. Like yeah. this is the top of the engine, it's so low. So it's interesting because most of the drift cars here in the paddock have rear radiators. Yeah. This one, since there's still room, you you put the uh, radiator the radiator in the front. In the front. Still. Yeah, yeah. So that's mainly it's not a pro drift car. It doesn't need 
crazy grip. We're not looking for every little piece of uh, weight transfer like nor you normally would be. And these engines are like a rotary engine is known to run pretty hot. So we just overbuild the cooling system and it's way better to have airflow up the front. The car is not getting hot at all. Like it's running super cool. I, I'm so impressed and surprised. And then so what kind of fuel are you running? So it's running VP C85 uh, with a blend of two-stroke <laughs> two oil for lubrication. Well, so when you were warming it up earlier, I the started smell. crying. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, it got in my eyes, you know, but it was, yeah. it was like, wow, this is yeah, awesome. Yeah, I've been asking myself, am I really crying because it's finished <laughs> or is it the fuel? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely pretty fumey. It is so cool. I love the design. Mm. I also like that you added a little bit of orange, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, a uh, bit of inspiration from the 787. We also were running quite a bit of orange in the RTR Ford Mustang and Formula Drift. So just keeping the theme going with this. Maybe we'll add some other things. Maybe it would be nice to have like continue some orange or white on the lip, the lower lip or something to show how low it is. What's but the kit? The kit is, it's from a company in the UK called Aero Kit. And they custom, we, we built this like 10 years ago. Hey, so I have shots of this at yeah. Goodwood then. Yeah, yeah, 2017, yeah, 20, 2018. 2018, yeah. 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 When it was just a normal teal and blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still teal and blue underneath, so you can see, look. Uh -huh. You can see the original oh, paint. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this was, it was painted. Uh, so the car is painted and then wrapped over. Uh, yeah, because you uh, can see some of the older. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. It's still, yeah. She's, uh, she's a bit beat up she, on the inside, but looks great she's on the been outside. Through a lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's just talk yeah. about the interior real quick. So in terms of the interior, did you have to change anything when you uh, swapped in the four No, it's not even finished. So this was built in an insane timeline. All we did was dry some tankers in behind this firewall area, uh -huh. added that. We don't even have the dashboard in. Like we didn't bring everything to finish the car fully. So it just has the, the dash, it has all the ECU master, the latest, um, latest software from them. And uh, yeah, sounds unbelievable. So then- Do you, do you want to hear it fire off in a minute? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that would be. Amazing. So yeah, you can that. see the back isn't even painted. Yeah, right? this is what it was before when it was running SR. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like the back is as it was, and we basically worked from here forward. So then after this event, after the world tour, you're going to probably take it apart yeah, again. Huh? There's lots of little things. So it's pretty much finished under the bonnet, things to tidy up, but loads of work to do in the interior. Uh, but we'll probably do it in the off season, just enjoy it for now. And then when there's a bit of a gap, we'll repaint the inside, uh, fix all the little things you see inside the arches and stuff like that. But it's here, we made it, we built this car with the rotary in a matter of weeks. Yeah, congrats. So, I mean, he, in, so for the LZ World Tour, there's like a group chat with all the people. And I remember you sending like a video was, of yeah. you guys just like tuning it on the street. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, Oh, crazy, crazy times. No Some sleep. push to get here. Team yeah. No sleep. I got here yesterday. Um, the car got here, literally, we tried bleeding the brakes, got the handbrake working a little bit, um, and we had five minutes to spare before practice finished. Just took it for a few runs, and uh, yeah, we're just happy we met it. Yeah. Like, it's cool. so much new with this. It's not like a 2J or an SR, which we're so experienced with. It's, it's so new, and when something is so new, you're like double checking a lot of different things. Uh, but it's been good. Cool. Yeah, I can't wait for you to start it. I think all the fans yeah. are excited about that too. You guys want to hear it? Yeah. yeah.
Oh. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Just like that. I love it. I love it. The noisemaker. Yeah. Amazing. It's a dream, man. Dream come true. That is, it, it's funny because it's like, it sounds so distinct. Yeah. It's almost like it's you're- It's so smooth. It's like, when you floor it, it's like so smooth. It's amazing. It's almost like you're playing a sound clip of the 7 8 yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's yeah. just so distinct that there's no other way to make that sound. No, I can't believe we've done it, man. 10,000 RPM red line. And it can, so talking to PPRE who built the engine, they said we can keep going. Really? They said, yeah, they said 11 is okay. But I'm just like, let's, let's leave it at 10. So do you think you're going to leave it NA or do you think you're going oh, to Oh, for sure. Really? NA. Yeah. NA is the way to go. NA is the way. NA is the sound. No silence. You know what I mean? It's just the perfect sound. So it's staying NA no matter what. If we ever get to the point where we need a little bit more, maybe a small sniff of nitrous. Ah. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to, like, no. Stop, <laughs> stop, stop. No, no. Stop putting ideas in my head. Cool. Uh, Dude, thank you so much. My pleasure. No, I appreciate it. Pleasure having you back in Ireland. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.